Good evening and welcome to Hunter and Central's Family Science Night. My name is Jonathan Denica here for Hunter and Central Television and I'm alongside Greg Bristol. He is here and we are here at the Hovercraft Station. Now Greg, what exactly does a Hovercraft do? So uh, like you'd expect, the Hovercraft uh, slightly levitates up off the floor so kids can take a ride on it uh, and go back and forth and feel like they're floating. So now I see behind us that we have a bit of a um, diorama. So can you explain some of the physics behind uh, how the hovercraft works? Absolutely. So uh, what happens with the hovercraft is we have uh, a leaf blower type apparatus on the back of it that sucks in air and blows it down through the bottom of the hovercraft, which uh, creates a force that pushes the hovercraft up into the air. So there's actually many different uses for a hovercraft. You know, some of them here are uh, aquatic related. Um, it has a long history also with many different scientists, including Emanuel Swedensberg, uh, as well as Sir John Thornycroft. Uh, so here's some type of hovercrafts also. The type that we're using is a peripheral jet hovercraft. So uh, what happens with that is, like I said before, the apparatus sucks in the air, pushes it down into a chamber below the hovercraft, and momentum uh, helps keep the air under there while a little bit slides out of it in order to make the hovercraft levitate. Well, Greg, is it possible we can get it to uh, up and running and have a uh, demonstration for us? Absolutely. Awesome. Well, there you have it. Hunter and Central is flying into the future with the brand new hovercraft. This is elephant toothpaste, and it's a neutralization reaction between hydrogen peroxide and yeast, and it blows up right. and makes foam. <laughs> Could you possibly show me how it's uh, done? Yeah, sure. She's gonna put hydrogen peroxide in the cup, and then she's gonna put a mixture of water and yeast, mix that together, and put it together with food coloring, and then it goes into foam and goes out of the cup. I'm alongside here with Kyle and Logan, and they're going to explain the invisible ink station to us. So Kyle, exactly what are you guys doing here? So we essentially like, we mixed lemon juice and water and then you can write your messages on a piece of paper with a Q-tip and when you like expose it to a heat source you can read the message. That sounds pretty interesting. So now uh, we're gonna have a demonstration from Logan on how to actually uh, do it. Okay, so here we have a smiley face. Uh, yep, so we're good. See a secret message. A little bit. It'll take a little bit. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, we could just show another one. It does take a little bit, so we're going to show you a previously used demonstration. So that's how it works. You put it over like a heat source like that, and in the end, it'll show your. In the end, it'll show your message like this one. We wrote lemon on it. We were using lemon juice, so this is what it'll end up looking like. Our station is all about spinning and angular momentum. So uh, the kids are standing on our uh, rotating platform and they do a couple different things. They start with their arms out and when they pull it in, they start to spin faster. Or similarly, we use this bike tire and when they spin with it one way and flip it over, they'll start to go faster the other way. So why do they start spinning faster when they close in their hands? It all has to do with angular momentum. When all of your weight is out in your arms, you're going to go slower, but when you pull it all in like a needle, you're going to spin faster. And then can you explain the bike wheel process? Yeah, so when you spin the bike tire, it's going to want to keep spinning the way it is originally. When you turn it, you're disturbing its equilibrium, and it's going to try and reestablish it by going faster in the other direction.
So basically what we do is we have juice cups and we have dry ice and we take a small piece of the dry ice and put it into half a cup of juice and it creates a kind of like a smoke. So Caroline's going to demonstrate that. After all the ice is um, gone and the fog goes away. So once the fog is gone and the ice is completely melted, you can drink it. But the thing is, dry ice gets beneath uh, 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So it, uh, Fahrenheit. So it is very cold. So once it cools down, you can actually drink it. And what's the station you have here today? Our station is Erupting Apples. And uh, what's the process behind this erupting apple? Uh, this is a chemical reaction. Um, it's actually an acid-base reaction between acetate and um, hydrogen carbonate. And it's the vinegar and the uh, baking soda that's erupting it. Is it real in the video? Yeah. Watch out. All right. So basically, we just pack the apple with baking soda. And then we take the vinegar. And the gas that forms at the end is the um, carbon dioxide from the reaction. So just as simple as that, baking soda, some vinegar yep. inside so the apple. Like All right, thank you. All right, thank you. So as you can see, at a screaming balloon station, when you sw when you swirl around the balloon like this, you get this cool screaming sound. And this sound is essentially created by the hex bolt we've placed inside of the balloon, ca causing friction on the surface of the balloon, and it keeps traveling around due to centripetal and acceleration. So right now I'm gonna have Chris demonstrate how we do this. And now depending on the size of the balloon, as well as the size of the nut, can control the, how high or low pitched the scream is. For example, For example, this one, this one has two larger nuts, so it's going to make a lower sound pitch. As you just saw, pops and other mishaps are very common, as when the nut is still traveling around the balloon and it drops on the floor, it's easily going to pop. Another thing that happens is that the balloons will almost get these kind of stretch marks because either the nut created some kind of hole or tear in the balloon and then as we swirled it around it created these dents. So our station is called Fun with Electricity so it's showing a bunch of like concepts of electrostatics where you have electrons moving around and it creates cool effects. And could you show us some of the, the things you have going on here? Yeah Madeline do you want to touch the plasma ball? Yeah so what we see here is the charged ball is producing current, right? And so it's traveling to Madeline's fingers over there because it's transferring the electricity from the ball to her fingers and then it's going to travel through her body all the way down to her feet and then becomes grounded. Mm -hmm. Alright. And then could you show me the station with the, the can? Yeah. electrons that it has so you're putting a positive charge on it so that that um, attracts all of the negative charge within the aluminum it induces an, if it'll work it induces a negative charge in it so it'll follow it around yeah now it's working so yeah it works better sometimes but not today and then uh, the the circuit board or yeah okay so Electricity can't flow if the circuit isn't complete, so it has to be attached to both sides of the battery. So when you turn this on, you're completing it, and it'll just lift off. Yeah. We're on the slime station. We're pretty popular. Um, it's actually really simple. There's only a couple ingredients in slime. Uh, obviously, you have water. Then we have some borax, and then we got um, some just regular Elmer's glue, and then food coloring if you want it to be colored. 
So we start by putting some glue in. Some glue. That's scientific. Some glue. Measure. About that much. That much glue. And then I'm going to make it green. So then you put the food coloring in. And then. Okay. Then you start to mix the color. I'm going to add a little bit more glue. Okay. All right, and now once it's all mixed, Thank you. Of course, then you add some water. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then once the water's mixed in, you put borax solution to make it sticky. Okay. Guys, can someone help them make slime? Okay, and then now, as you can see, it starts to get stickier. You guys want to make slime? And yeah, that's basically it. And uh, what is a lava lamp? Could you explain it? So what we do is we pour, we have probably a third of it filled with water, and then we pour the rest with oil. And after that, we ask for the kids what their favorite color is so they can choose the food coloring. And then we put about like five to 10 drops. You can also mix it as well with other colors. And then once you do that, we get Alka-Seltzer. And the point of that is to create CO2, which it reacts with the water. And so the water, so there's different, there's a principle of density and water is more dense than oil. So it sits at the bottom and the water reacts with the seltzer, creates CO2 and the CO2 and the water uh, rise up with the gas and it also uh, picks up the food coloring and essentially it creates a lava lamp and then once it reaches the top, it loses the gas and then comes back down. Hi, so here at the ecosystem booth, we're trying to teach kids not to litter. So in each of these little cups, we have filled with our imaginary dirt, which is just pudding and kids are able to make their own ecosystems, including their top layer of dirt, which is Oreos, life with gummy worms and rocks like marshmallows. And then from there, we give them little pieces of licorice. And those licorice represent plastic. And we're trying to teach the kids that when plastic is in ecosystems, it can kill the life in the ecosystems, including the plants and the animals. And just encouraging kids not to litter and be more conscious about their surroundings. Uh, this is the Women in STEM presentation. So could you tell me a little bit more about the Women in STEM? Yeah, so uh, the goal here is to expose um, the kids that are here tonight about uh, the fact that it's not only about men in science, there's also a lot of women that have made important contributions. So like a lot of times when people think of famous scientists, they think of Albert Einstein or Isaac Newton, but there's a lot of other women that have done some really cool experiments too. So at each of the stations here tonight, um, there's a woman featured, and that woman had something to do with the idea or concept of the experiment. So um, we made these passports, and so they have all the names of the different women that are featured here tonight. So as the kids move from each station to station, um, they can learn about each woman, and then they get a sticker, um, and then they can come back to me at the end, um, tell me something they learned, and then I have prizes for them. So yeah. Hi guys, uh, my name is Nick Brunetti. I'm part of the 100th Century Robotics team. And here um, are the VEX robots uh, that they're having the kids try out. Um, you can see John here uh, doing uh, the swept away challenge. Um, so the object uh, of the game is obviously to put the uh, balls into the opponent's side. Uh, we use these robots for many different things, um, including uh, learning about gearing ratios during a hill climb. Um, we have the uh, students uh, during the class uh, build their own robots. Um, with uh, you know restrictions like weight and uh, sensors and motors um, to try to get the uh, feel of what it will be like uh, in a normal engineering world. Um, and we also uh, have these students uh, have these exact model of robot uh, to learn about uh, programming um, and to in encoding a robot to do uh, itself, do all the functions by itself pretty much. Um, so they're really helpful in, in, in teaching some basics fundamental and fundamentals about robotics. So this is our 2017 robot compressor gadget. Uh, our 2018 robot that will be competing in the first power-up competition is currently uh, in a box on its way to Detroit, so we cannot have that here tonight, unfortunately. Um, but this robot did compete last year, 
Um, one of the things about this robot is that the height it has to be, this is the maximum height for 2017. And basically what the robot does is it picks up the uh, yellow gears over here, as we can see. It picks these up, and its goal is to take the gears from the ground. It comes down, picks them up, and then it puts them on the peg on the uh, airship as we had it um, in that competition year. So there were tons of challenges in building this robot. Um, getting the gear pickup off the floor was a large one for our team because we wanted to have that ability to not have to have a human feed it into the top, although we do have that capability as well. Uh, one of the really cool things about this robot as well is it actually can climb a rope. Um, on the back of the robot here, there's a drum that spins around and the rope uh, heads into that and then the robot goes up to uh, a couple feet in the air. So about the competition season, um, which comes after our build season, um, build season is six weeks long. <clears throat> Starts with a kickoff webcast from First, which is the company that runs all the events. And they explain the challenge and what you have to do that year. And then after that webcast, you have six weeks from that minute um, until midnight on Stop Build Day to build your robot and build from scratch, code, everything. And then it goes in a bag and gets shipped to your competitions. Um, at the competitions, you compete in the game for that year. And then after that, um, for the past year, uh, many years, we've been going to the regional competition uh, at Lehigh University. And this year, we are making another appearance at the World Competition in Detroit. So basically, what you're going to do is you're going to be controlling the actual movement of the robot. So this will move the right side of the drivetrain, and this will move the left side of the drivetrain. So it doesn't take much. So you don't have to press all the way down on it. And don't press the triggers because that will speed up and slow down the robot. So all you got to do is you got to just pick up a gear and deliver it with, um, he will be controlling the arm and actually picking up the gear. So uh, I'm pressing the Y button and the B button. That's right. So when he comes over and gets this gear, so he can drive over now, you're, once he gets the gear in there, the claw is going to automatically close and then you can hit the X button to bring it back into the robot. So now you're lined up, so you just have to drive forward, so just push both of them at the same speed forward, just very slightly, all right? Yeah, oh, there you go, keep going, you're good. Keep going and here, all right, so push this right one forward a little more. Yeah, you're good, and now just go forward. Just drive through the gear. All right, Imagine so what we're going to do over here is once he goes forward, a little more. Just go, a little more speed. All right, hit that Y button. So and now hit the X, now bring it up. There you go. All right, we're going to press. Y. A first, right? And then Y. Awesome. The last station here at Family Science Night is probably the most delicious. Here we have a lot of National Honor Society members making their own homemade ice cream and giving them to the little kids. So basically, shaking the bag, it lowers the freezing point of water. So it makes it so that it will it will like solidify the ice cream better and stuff like that. Sean, do you have any two cents back? Yeah, the, we yeah. add salt. We add salt to the ice in the bag, so it lowers the freezing point of the ice of the ice there. So it stays colder for longer, and then that combined with the shaking of the bag keeps it so that makes it so that the ice the uh, milk mixture gets uh, just keeps getting it softer, and we can you do that for longer because the ice can stay colder for longer. The more salt, the better. And yeah, pretty much. Works. Yeah, liquid nitrogen works too. Well, Sean, Vinny, thank you so much. And here we actually have our own Fernando Rodriguez enjoying some homemade ice cream. Tonight you're in, an, in for a treat. We've got Mad Science here, and this is Ozone Alex. Can everybody say hi, Ozone Alex? Okay, so sit tight. We got 45 minutes of wacky science. That's right? right. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Hello, everybody. There's a lot of you. I think Family Science Night is an awesome idea, don't you guys? Yeah. Wonderful. Raise your hand if you've done anything with mad science before an after school program, a birthday party. I see a lot of hands. That's awesome. If you've done something in math science, you might have heard of our three favors. All right. These are three favors that I ask of you so that we can all have the most fun as possible. All right. So the first favor is really easy. 
just be quiet. Easiest one. There's a couple reasons that it's important to be quiet during the show. The first one is I just love to hear myself talk. I love microphones. I, I hear myself all day. I can't get enough of it. But if you're talking and I get distracted, I might forget something. And it might be the coolest thing. And I don't want to do that to you guys. The second reason it's important to be quiet is sometimes, sometimes I call up volunteers to the stage. And I need to give them directions. All right? And if they can't hear those directions, then we can't do the show. And I want to do the show, because it's, it's a lot of fun. The third reason it's important to be quiet is sometimes what I have up here can be dangerous. So I have to give safety warnings before I do anything very scary or dangerous. And I need you guys to hear them. And if you don't hear them, then I have to move on. So that's the first favor. Easiest one, just be quiet. The second one, it can be pretty hard, but I think you'll have a good time of it. It's really easy to just stay in your seat. And you guys have really comfortable seats, so I don't think that should be a problem. If you're a volunteer and you come up to the stage, there's a secondary rule. And that's also very simple. Don't touch the things on my table. If you're a volunteer, I will give you things that you might need. I'll give you instructions. Uh, but like I said, some of the things are dangerous, so stay away from my table. Now, the third favor. The third favor is the most important favor. Can you guys handle the most important favor? Yeah. Well, it didn't sound like you could. Can you? Yeah. Nah, I don't know. I don't know. Can you really handle it? Yeah. OK, OK. OK, I think you guys can handle it. The third favor. The third? And most important favor is to have fun. Can you guys have fun? Yeah. Good, good, good. I'm glad we got that out of the way, because if you couldn't have fun, then it wouldn't, it'd be kind of pointless being here. Now, I love to start my show with a magic trick. And for this magic trick, I'm going to need not one, not two, but three volunteers to come up to the stage. So if we could get house lights, I'll call on some brave volunteers. How about you in the blue? Why don't you come on down? Volunteers, when you come on the stage, make sure you come up on this staircase, because there's an extension cord over there, and I don't want anyone to trip. Hello, what's your name? Abby. Abby, this is Abby. Round of applause for Abby. Let's do someone from the back. Uh, this gentleman in the dark shirt. Yes, you. Come on down. And what is your name? Yvonne. Yvonne? Is Yvonne. It Vivon. Yeah. Vivon. Round of applause for Vivon. All right, one more. I said, da -da -da. how about down here in this section? How about you? Come on up. Make sure you go all the way around. All right, volunteers, Abby, Vivon, why don't you come to the center of the stage? And what is your name? Madison. This is Madison. Round of applause for Madison. All right, so I'm going to have you all come down center stage. Go all the, come a little farther. Yeah, yeah. Don't be afraid. They don't bite yet. All right, we'll have a straight line. Abby, you can be right here. Vivon, you can be in the middle. Mass okay, this is pretty good. I like it. Okay, so the magic trick I'm showing you today is called Three Cup Monty. You might have seen it before, and my magician friend taught it to me. It usually doesn't require volunteers, but I like to think, make things more fun. So what I need you to do, Madison, is hold this cup with both hands on your head. Like that. Both hands. All right, there you go. We don't want it to fall. All right. Vivon, hands up. There you go. Give it right there. Excellent. Ready? Cool. Wonderful. Now, once I got that, we got that. Keep it straight up, guys. Straight up. All right, keep it right on your head. Now, I'm going to fill one of them with water. Not that one. Not that one. 
Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Keep them on your head. Now, this is the part you might be familiar with. We mix the cups around. So keeping it on your head, I want you guys to just mix up the order. You can walk ahead. There you go, Vivon. And then Madison, you can come all the way around. We want to mix up the order. So you can come all the way around in front. Yeah, right, yeah, right over there. And then Abby, why don't you switch around here? Yeah, just like that. And Vivon, you can all actually come over here. We'll put Madison in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, great. Now, the magic trick. You may have been paying, you may have been paying close attention, but I am sure you do not know which cup has the water. Right. It's tricky. In fact, I also forgot. Hmm. It's just, and then I moved. I'm sure you guys, but I, I got it. Okay. 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 I got. It, okay. Uh, it's. It's not in this one. Yeah. It's, is it in this one? No, no, not in that one. Yeah. So that means it must be, and then. It is crazy. Thank, thank you very much. Volunteers, thank you very much. You may return to your seats. Now, my name is Ozone Alex. I'm a mad scientist. Mad doesn't mean I'm angry, just that I'm a little different. But as a scientist, as a scientist, I do a lot of things that other scientists do. A scientist does a lot of note taking and observing. They watch the world around them and they write things down. Another thing a scientist does is they make a hypothesis. Have you heard that word before, hypothesis? Yeah, wonderful. If you haven't heard of it, or maybe you forgot, it's when a scientist makes a guess or a prediction. And I'm gonna give you guys a chance to practice. Can I get the house lights? Raise your hand if you have a hypothesis as to where the water went. Yes, a young scientist in the green shirt. What was that? A sponge. a sponge, maybe. That's a good idea. But if there was a sponge, there might have been something that fell out, or maybe the sponge even fell out. Maybe. You, you, I like that idea. Any other hypotheses? Yes. Yes, you. It evaporated really quickly. Maybe. Maybe I superheated the cup. I might have hurt Vivan, though. I don't think I did that. One more, one more. Anyone from the back? Yeah, I see, I saw a hand shoot up right in the back row. Now you're gonna have to speak up. The water didn't even go in the cup. The water didn't even go in the cup. Okay, well, there is one big difference between magicians and mad scientists. And that is, a magician will never, ever, ever, ever reveal their secrets. But I'm not a magician. I'm a mad scientist, and I love to reveal secrets. So who would like to know how I did it? Oh, wonderful. So I did it using something called slush powder. Slush powder looks a little bit like this. And I put some in the cup before we even began. Slush powder has another word called polyacrylate. Has anyone heard of polyacrylate? Anyone heard of slush powder? Right. Now, if you didn't raise your hand, you are lying. Because I know that each and every one of you has been very close to some polyacrylate in your life. Do you want to know how I know that? I know that because it's in this. We've all worn these. There's some of this in that. Slush powder will absorb water. It absorbs a lot of water. It absorbs other liquid things, too. So it's in diapers. 
It absorbs, you know, the things that are in diapers, and it keeps the baby dry so it doesn't get a rash. And that's how I did my trick. Why didn't the slush powder fall out? Because it's a little sticky. If we had extra time, I'd let you feel it, but I gotta keep it up here. Now, I'd like to tell you a story. I have a magician friend, and I also have a scientist friend. All right? And my scientist friend loved to take notes, lots and lots and lots and lots of notes. He filled up one notebook, two notebooks, 10 notebooks, 100 notebooks. He filled up 1,000 notebooks with his scientific notes. But then, disaster struck. He was doing an experiment with electricity and lightning came through his window and set all of his notes on fire. His whole laboratory burned. He's okay, don't worry, but he lost his notes. So he, he was determined to invent an indestructible paper and he toiled and he toiled and he did experiments and he worked and he worked and then he did it. And he let me borrow some. You guys wanna see it? This is special, indestructible, mad science paper. And I need a volunteer to help me prove it. Can I get the house lights? Thank you. Yes, you, sir. All the way around. I know it. I'm about to meet him. And what is your name? Michael. Michael, this is Michael. Round of applause for Michael. So this is special, indestructible, mad science paper, and you and I are going to prove that together, Michael, okay? So why don't you hold on to this, and I'll give you instructions as to what to do. Just show the audience there, so, so they can see. Now, this mad science paper is indestructible. It cannot be crumpled. In fact, I defy you, Michael, to crumple it. I'll give you three seconds to crumple it as good as you can. One, two, three. Wait. You're much stronger than you look, Michael. That's okay, that's okay. Maybe it was a prototype, but I know for a fact that this paper cannot be ripped even a little bit. I dare you to rip it in half. <laughs> Thank you very much, Michael. You may return to your seat. Oh, of course. This is the indestructible mad science paper. Now, I know it can't be ripped. I know it can't be crumpled. But I haven't tested to see if it burns. And now it is time for a mad science safety warning. Before you experiment with fire, always ask a big person. And when you do that experiment, make sure the big person you asked is there, as well as a fire extinguisher. Wonderful. Before we do our experiment, let's get one hypothesis. Who has a hypothesis as to what will happen when I set flame to this paper? Yes, you, sir. Um, maybe it might burn or it might not burn because it's maybe put something on it. But which one? I think it might not burn. It might not burn. Okay, well, let's find out. All right. Oh, I forgot something. You have to be really quiet. Right. One more thing. Sometimes in science, we don't know what will happen. We have a hypothesis, it won't burn, but honestly, I'm not sure. Actually, there's one more thing. <laughs> you on the front row, everyone in the front row, please pay special attention to the special mad science paper because I'm borrowing it and it's kind of expensive. Okay. Oops. Right. So, that was not special mad science paper, but it was special paper. That's something called flash paper. Have you heard of flash paper before? No, yeah? Flash paper is a special tool that magicians use because it burns a hundred times faster than regular paper. It also, you may have noticed, 
doesn't leave anything when it burns. So next time you see a magician doing a trick with fire, you can think to yourself, hey, that's probably flash paper. All right. Now, I'd like to teach you a very special science word, OK? And that word is polymer. Can you guys say that? Polymer. Polymer. Polymer refers to a certain kind of matter. And you can typically tell what it is if it's either really stretchy or really sticky. Maybe rubber bands could be a polymer or slime. There's another one called silly putty. Have you heard of silly putty? Yes, yes. Well, I'd like to tell you a story about silly putty. When they made silly putty, they didn't know what they would do with it. They had no idea. They, they tried to think of something they could do with this fabulous thing they had created, but they weren't sure. So they put it in little eggs and sold it to children. But many years later, there's another scientist that discovered an amazing use for silly putty. That scientist was also an astronaut. And he worked in the International Space Station. And when you're on the International Space Station, there's a unique problem. They're missing something that many of us take for granted. Can anybody give me a guess as to what might be missing on the space station? Yes. Gravity. They are missing gravity. They don't have, well, they have very little gravity up there. So when you're working on the space station, all your tools are just floating around you. And that might seem really cool, maybe on the first day, but eventually, you put your special translocator up there, and it goes missing. So this scientist, this astronaut, saw his daughter playing with the silly putty. And he asked his daughter, could I take that to the space station? And she said yes, thankfully. And he discovered a use for it. He would stick it to his tools, and he'd stick his tools to the wall, and they would not go anywhere. And all the other astronauts were jealous, so he shared it, because he was a good guy. Now, I have some silly putty. Mine is purple. A polymer is very sticky. Makes lots and lots and lots of sort of globules, things like that. It's also kind of messy, so I have uh, some paper towels here. But I think it's also fun to make our own polymers. So for that, I'm going to need a volunteer. The lady right there. Excellent. Come on down. <clears throat> mm, kind of sticky. Hello. What's your name? Audrey. Audrey, this is Audrey. Let's have a round of applause for Audrey. <laughs> Audrey, I love your outfit. But did you know that I have an ear to the fashion world? And I know what's coming down the pipe. The next big thing. Would you like to see it? Sure. Here it is. Black poncho. I swear it's going to be the new thing in France about next year. Would you like to try it on for us? Sure. Wonderful, wonderful. OK. Wow. Very 2019. I like it a lot. Don't you guys like it? Yeah. Right, well, let's sort of straighten it out. Yeah. No, excellent, excellent. Now, the other thing about the black poncho is it sort of protects you if you wanted to make a polymer, like slime. Would you like to make some slime, Audrey? All right, so we're going to make slime in this big bucket. Why don't you come down here and hold the bucket. The first ingredient in slime is PVA. It stands for polyvinyl alcohol. And we're just going to fill up this bucket. You think that's enough? I'll we'll give a little more. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, because I like slime that's green. I bought some green paint. Would you like to add some green paint? Cool. Mm, excuse me. Now, 
The final ingredient is something called sodium borate. It's a scientific word for sort of soapy water. So when this goes in there, it's going to start getting sticky really fast. So you're going to need to mix it with your wooden spoon. Where's your wooden spoon? You didn't bring a wooden spoon. I thought there was a memo. Everyone had to bring their wooden spoon. No. All right, why don't you just use your hand, okay? All right, so hold, the, hold it against your body with one. There you go, just like that. Got that, and then put the other one in it. Excellent. Let's get mixing. Keep going, keep going. More, 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 more. Is it all sticky? Yeah. Yeah, why don't you, why don't you show everybody? Yeah. Round of applause for Audrey, our resident slime maker. What a wonderful job. Here, I'll take that. Now you can uh, have some of these. Okay. Thank you. And have some more of these if you need them. And uh, that's on loan from Paris, so I'm going to need it back. Okay. Thank you very much, Audrey. Round of applause. You may return to your seat. You can put that on my table if you want. Okay. You're welcome. Now, this morning I had a really strange thing happen to me, and I'd like to tell you about it. I was sleeping, and I woke up, as you do. And I had my socks on, and I was kind of tired, so I dragged my feet a little bit. And then, when I touched the doorknob, it shocked me. It was so startling, I was barely awakened. Oh! I was shocked awake. And it got me thinking about electricity. And maybe some way I could make it. And I came up with this little thing right here. Electricity is when electrons jump from one thing to another, from a cloud to the earth, along a copper wire from my hand to the doorknob. And I'd like to demonstrate my electricity machine for the first time today. And I'm going to need some volunteers. Just one for now. Yes, orange shirt. I believe that's Pikachu on your shirt. Come on down. Now, with my fantastic electricity machine, you will be able to throw lightning bolts. Exactly. What's your name? Bobby. Bobby. Bobby, would you like to throw some lightning bolts? Yes. Wonderful. Come on down. All right. Place your hand right here. All right. Leave your hand there. All right. And I'm going to turn it on. It's going to make some noise. And you just, whoosh, you get to throw them. Got it? All right. You feel it? Oh, other hand, other hand. Leave it there. Uh, this hand. Oh, right there, right there. And then leave that hand there and throw the lightning bolt. Maybe your technique's going to try a, kind of the flourish. Maybe something like, I like, uh, mm, there's something missing, isn't there? I know what he needs. He needs a target. Who would like to be his target? Uh, the bottom. Yes, you, sir. Come on down. Oh, up and down. What's your name? Quang Vet. What was that? Quang Vet. Quang Vet? Wonderful. Huang Vet, come on down. Would you like to throw a lightning bolt at him? Get a little closer. A little closer. Maybe put your hand out. Put your hand out. Uh, maybe just put a little right, right there. Oh, did he get you? All right, would you like to throw a lightning bolt at someone? All right, I'm going to need you to hold his hand. Other hand. There you go. There. All right, who would like to be his target? Let's have a girl this time. Someone in the back? Yes, you, right there. Yeah, come on down. All right. You ready to throw your first lightning bolt? Go all the way around. And what's your name? Alejandra. What was that? Alejandra. Alejandra, come on down. Thank you. I didn't even have to ask. All right. Throw your lightning bolt. Hmm. Get a little closer. Actually, I think we've done this before. Put your hand out. Oh! Now, would you like to throw one? Oh, you got to hold his hand. All right. Who would like to be her target? Yes, you. 
Come on down. And what is your name? Missy? Come on. Maisie. Macy? What is it? Macy. OK, come on, Macy. Throw your lightning bolt. Oh. I think we can get one more out of this. Yes, whose uh, sibling is fiercely shaking their hand. Come on down. All right, now you may have noticed that the lightning bolt is getting quieter and quieter. It's because as more people it goes through, the weaker it gets. So we're going to do one more. Did you feel it? Was, did it hurt? It was a little bit, wasn't it? See, as we go down, they're actually losing electrons to the floor. So their lightning bolts are not as strong. All right, I'm going to turn this off, but I need you to keep your hands together, OK? All right, and then I have a little sort of screw in here. It takes the rest of the electrons. So. There we go. All right, I think you shall be safe to break the chain. Excellent. Round of applause for my lightning throwing volunteers. I love the movies. Who else loves the movies? Wow, yeah, moviegoers. I love the movies. I went to the movies recently, actually. I saw a great show. Now, I won't tell you that. My favorite movie has a witch in it. Can anyone guess what my favorite movie is? Yes. The Wizard of Oz. It is my favorite movie. And you know what? My favorite part in that movie is when they melt the witch. But I could never figure out how they did it. So I was thinking, I know they poured water on it in the movie, but you might have tried this. If you paint yourself green and cover yourself with water, you don't melt. So I was trying to think of a way to actually melt it. So I was thinking, and I was thinking, and I was thinking. And then I got it. And I actually brought a meltable witch with me today. Would you like to meet her? Ah, oh, here she is. We're going to melt her. And I need a volunteer. You, sir, in the red shirt, jumping up and down. What's your name? Des. What was that? Des. Des. This is Des. <laughs> Round of applause for Des. Right, before we melt a witch, because it is dangerous business, magic spells, curses, and whatnot, why don't you come on over here? We're going to need to give you some protective equipment. Can you put this on? That was good. Now, I have a fancy scientist coat, uh, but all I could scrounge up for today was this apron. There we go. Put this on. I think it's stunning. That's another thing that's coming out in Paris in 2019. What a wonderful apron. You look very good, Des. Actually, you know, it's kind of thematic. You look like the heroine that melts the witch. Don't you guys think? With the, the apron, it looks a little bit like Dorothy. Actually, I think there's really one more thing that we need to sort of complete the Dorothy look. Uh, and that is a pair of these. So we'll just put these on you. All right. Spitting image, don't you think? I think so. Now, Des, or Dorothy, excuse me, would you like to melt the witch? OK, we're going to melt her together. This stuff gets a little stinky. Yeah, just pour it over her. There you go. Swirl it around a little bit so they can see. Yeah. Ah, I'm melting. More. We can melt her whole head. I got a lot of this stuff. Yeah. Look at your handiwork, Des. 
You are a witch killing machine. Just put a little bit more, yeah. Ooh. What an excellent job, Des. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'll get I'll I'll get the costume back, yeah. Yeah. I tied that on pretty good. There we go, there we go. Thank you very much, Des. Okay. So, let's all take a deep breath. Hold it, hold it, hold it. That's relaxing, isn't it? We just exhaled together, and together we exhaled some oxygen, some nitrogen, and also some carbon dioxide. Now you might have heard of the states of matter, gas, solid, liquid. Any piece of matter can be in one of these states. If it's really hot, it's a gas. If it's really cold, it's a solid. If it's in the middle, it's a liquid. And it depends on the matter what Temperature makes it what state? For instance, for instance, iron has to get really hot to become a gas. But carbon dioxide has to get really cold to become a solid. And that sort of leads me to my next thing. Would you guys like to see something cooler? Yeah. Like even cooler, like just way cooler. You want to see it? Yeah. Wonderful. I, I brought it today. It's my cooler. But in my cooler, I have some frozen carbon dioxide. What was that, what was that word? Frozen carbon dioxide. Okay, some people call it dry ice, and they are correct. But I call it frozen carbon dioxide, because that's what it is. Now. Frozen carbon dioxide, or dry ice, is really cold. It is colder than the North Pole ever will be. It's colder than regular ice. It makes regular ice. It's very cold. So that leads me to my next safety warning. I've got some pellets of dry ice. And I'm very careful, but they might go somewhere. So if you see it, don't touch it. You will get hurt. If you see it, just say, Ozone Alex, there's some dry ice over there. And I will put my gloves on and pick it up, OK? Now, let me ask you a question. If I took this spoon and it heated it up, to, let's say, 200 degrees Fahrenheit, and stuck it in some water, what sort of sound would we hear? Well, to this dry ice, to this dry ice, the spoon is that hot. So let's see what sound it makes. Have you ever heard that? So what's happening? Anyone have a hypothesis? Uh, yes. Maybe it's being scraped. That's a good hypothesis. What's happening is dry ice does something really cool. It sublimates. And when something sublimates, it goes directly from its, its solid state to its gaseous state. No liquid. That's why it's dry ice. And it sublimates so fast that it pushes my spoon away, and I push it back. And it's out and back, off and back, off and back. Can you hear that kind of sound it's making? It makes that sound really quickly. Would you like to hear it again? Yeah. Ma maybe not. Can you, hear, can you hear the different beats with the spoon going back and forth? Kind of hard to hear. A little bit. Right. Dry ice expands, or doesn't expand, it becomes a gas. And when it becomes gas, it does expand. But sometimes that's hard to see. So uh, I came up with a quick method. It involves using 
a scientific gas capture device called a bubble. I'm sure you've never heard of it. It's cutting edge technology. So I've got some soap here and some water, and together they'll make bubbles, but the first thing they need is a little bit of gas. So let's add some. Lots of bubbles. Now if I run my stick through it, you'll see that when they break, the carbon dioxide is what's released. Can you guys see that? Wonderful. I'm kind of thirsty right now. I could go for some water, maybe some juice. Do you guys like juice? Do you like soda? Yeah. That's what I thought. Now, when I drink soda, my favorite part is the little bubbles in it. Did you know that those bubbles are made of carbon dioxide? No. Well, they are. And in fact, I've got some carbon dioxide right here. It's in my cooler. If I fill this flask with a little water, and toss a little dry ice in there, we'll get some carbon dioxide. And this flask is very special, as you can see. It has a little spout on it. So the carbon dioxide will come out and out. And it'll come out in such a small stream that some brave volunteers might even taste it. No, just, just you, come on. Um, you? Some in the back. You, sir, right there. Yeah, come on down. All right, what is your name? Amy. This is Amy. And what's your name? Caitlin. Caitlin, and you? Joe. Joe? This is Joe. Would you guys like to taste some carbon dioxide? Well, that's what you volunteered for. Line up, I'll make some. You guys ready? Open up. <laughs> Open up. Here. What does it taste like? Air. Air? There's something else there. Here, Here Joe. What's it taste like? <coughs> oh. Don't breathe it. Just taste it. Can you guys taste that? Yeah. Think about soda. What would soda taste like if it wasn't sweet? Give it another try. Do you taste it? No? Might be a little bubbly. Let me see if I can taste it. It might be bad dry ice. No, I got it. I got it. It's hard to taste, though. What you're tasting is what those little bubbles are made out of. All right? It's the same thing. So it'll be the same. It'll have the same taste. It's a little, little bubbly. It's a little, kind of a little bitter. One more taste. Are you good? All right. Thank you very much. Now, like I said, I love the movies. I also like scary movies. And in those movies, there's often a cemetery. And in that cemetery, there's often some fog. Hollywood makes that fog with big fog machines, but they used. They used to use dry ice. And I've got a little extra, so I think we should make our very own Hollywood Cemetery. So, what's going to happen is I'm going to dump all my dry ice into my bucket. It's going to make a lot of gas. 
and it's going to bubble out, it's going to bubble out. But this is a big room, guys. It'll probably only fill up, like, maybe this sort of row down here. So, if you'd like to be part of my Hollywood cemetery, I need every young scientist who wants to be part of it to get out of their seats and come down here. All right. Don't worry, it'll go pretty far. Let's have shorter scientists in the front. Now we've got much more room on this side, so scoot a little bit. Very good. All right. Now. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stay down there. All right. Half of the young scientists over here walk that way. There's plenty of room for them. Everybody sort of scoot down a little bit. I want everybody to be part of my cemetery. Everybody scoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just scoot a little bit. There'll be a little more room. There's, I see a huge pocket over here. All right. You gentlemen who are on my stage, there will be no fog over here. You know, it's only down there. So, there you go. Come, follow. Go, go. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Now, there's one very important rule. Keep your hands behind your back. If I see hands, then my Hollywood cemetery may end early. Let's get a little ambiance. Can we get the, the, the stage lights down? Yeah, I like that. Very good. Very spooky. All right. Hands, hands behind your back. Hands behind your back. I think we got enough for another pass. Hands behind your back. Yeah, I like that. A little bit of lightning, lighting magic. Okay. We're, you know, there wasn't a lot to taste. That was my Hollywood cemetery. Oh, hey, off the stage. Keep going. Now, all you young scientists who are down here, I told you the most important thing in the beginning. Does anyone remember what it was? Yes. Having fun. Now, here's my final question for you. Did you have fun? That's what I like to hear. Thank you very much, everybody.